Let's look through some uh, of the issues in actually uh, dimming the sun. The section is titled Dimming the Noontime Sun. Uh, what are the logistics? What are the issues? What are the uh, problems we have to worry about and so on? Uh, here is a, a, a statement from a book. Those things we call artifacts are not apart from nature. They have no dispensation, no special uh, permission to break the rules, to ignore or violate natural law. At the same time, they are adapted to human goals and purposes. They are what they are in order to satisfy our desire. So this is a way of thinking that, uh, yes, there are many things in nature, and while we cannot uh, ignore or violate natural law, we can uh, adapt them to human goals and purposes. They are what they are in order to satisfy our desire. There are discussions about whether uh, man has dominion over nature and so on, as some religious scriptures would have us believe, and then there is a whole debate about whether we are the stewards of uh, the environment, preserving the environment, or if that's not our job, that's God's job, or some such thing, right? So this debate can go on, but in the meantime, looking at the uh, dimming the noontime sun, uh, we will focus here on spraying aerosols for now, but that's not the only idea that is uh, in the more general um, category or umbrella of what is called solar radiation management, where you are trying to basically uh, reduce the energy coming from the sun using various approaches. <clears throat> this is a figure from a Carbon Brief uh, that summarizes the ideas from papers. So this is solar engineering. Six proposed methods to reflect more sunlight to reduce global warming. So obviously we are talking about sulfate uh, stratospheric aerosols, so release reflective aerosols into the stratosphere about 20 kilometers. Either you can go up in uh, planes and do it, or you can have tethered balloons like this, which would be much simpler uh, without moving parts, without having to take off and land and so on. But then to load them, you will need some sort of a pipeline from the surface, which would uh, continuously supply the aerosol, which would be sprayed uh, into the stratosphere again <coughs> at the appropriate uh, height. Okay. People have also proposed giant space mirrors, which would reflect away uh, sunlight at greater than 400 kilometers. Uh, ideas are there for thinning the uh, cirrus clouds. We will see in a minute that thin cirrus clouds high in the altitude 5 to 14 kilometers allow sunlight to come in but trap the outgoing long wave and they don't have much of uh, uh, impact on total energy balance uh, other than uh, increasing the greenhouse effect. So the idea is to go and spray them uh, to form more ice crystals uh, which can reflect sunlight and then thin the cirrus clouds uh, so that outgoing long wave uh, absorption is uh, reduced. This is about creating shinier crops actually and buildings to reflect uh, more sunlight so you can see that there are places where everything is uh, painted white which obviously can reduce the temperature by substantial amounts uh, when the sun is uh, bright and this is about uh, spraying the stratus deck over parts of the ocean uh, with uh, sea salt from a ship to make the clouds more reflective so you are actually increasing the brightness of the clouds so that they become uh, their albedo goes up and they reflect uh, more uh, sunlight okay the other idea is to turn the ocean itself into a mirror so you have a fleet of boats running around uh, releasing micro bubbles to make the ocean surface much more reflective and as you know, when the solar radiation angle is high, the ocean can almost look dark because its albedo goes down to about 2%. Uh, but at high angles, if you're flying and you look down and sun is the high angle, you can get a strong glint. So ocean can 
can reflect a lot of the sunlight depending on the angle but this is about just ref uh, increasing it ref its reflectivity to sun at any angle by producing bubbles as we will see here okay so this is an example the difference in albedo here and here is quite uh, large 30 40 50 percent differences and you can lose lots of energy by doing that so the, these are the thin uh, high uh, cirrus clouds which allow uh, sunlight to uh, um, come in. Uh, where are we looking at here? Solar radiation to come in and they scatter a little bit but they trap the outgoing long wave. We can see there is a long wave coming in here at this amount and only this much is going out. So when you have homogeneous cirrus clouds they are having an impact of warming or having a greenhouse effect whereas if you spray ice nucleating particles into these cirrus clouds that occur naturally uh, then you can create ice crystals and create instead of homogeneous clouds you can create broken up heterogeneous clouds which uh, reduce the absorption of the outgoing long wave and can presumably uh, scatter uh, more of the sunlight as well. So large ice crystals form on ice nucleating particles that you spray uh, into them. Okay. Um, I just wanted to remind ourselves again that the uh, polar stratus clouds uh, form pre predominantly over Antarctica because the temperatures over Antarctica during its peak winter months reach uh, as cold as minus 90 degrees uh, centigrade. The Arctic does get pretty cold but not always cold enough to form uh, polar stratus clouds so it's not uh, uh, such a dominant feature of uh, the Arctic uh, circle and you can see the dash line here where the Antarctic and Arctic temperatures are close to each other during the year but nonetheless uh, the reason why the ozone hole is so strong over uh, Antarctica is because it has much higher uh, occurrence of polar stratus cloud within which the uh, reactions can happen that form uh, chlorine oxide CLO is formed which is what uh, catalytically destroys ozone okay so this is just to remind ourselves that uh, when we do um, spraying of aerosols into the uh, stratosphere we have to be aware that as we saw before we don't thin away the uh, um, ozone hole so that's definitely something we want to avoid the other concern that people have I will list a, uh, uh, several items next uh, is that the uh, aerosol spraying to dim the noontime sun has to keep going because if you stop it then very quickly the system can rebound and remember that with this solar radiation management you are not guaranteeing that emissions are reducing at the same time you're just trying to reduce the incoming shortwave energy so that outgoing longwave energy is correspondingly decreased and the temperatures of the earth uh, decrease but if the system is broken because of uh, a terrorist attack or uh, from a natural uh, catastrophe or because the uh, um, policy options got uh, overturned and people decided to turn off solar radiation management then you can have what is called a termination shock so here is threat to uh, solar radiation management delivery system the, the are this the um, defenses built into the system to protect against terrorist attack is it uh, a, is a backup system deployed obviously the solution is to have a backup system like for example uh, what is planned for GPS where even if somebody knocks out the GPS system for let's say uh, military war purposes then you have backup systems uh, from a catastrophe uh, can threaten the SRF system then again um, can the deployer maintain the solar radiation management can other actors deploy SRM in time and uh, there is also a very clear possibility there are lots of oppositions to any sorts of geoengineering not just solar radiation management then what will be the compromises or ramp down of solar radiation management and will they have power to stop SRM globally and again create 
the so-called termination shock where the system ramps back up to the uh, warming that uh, we would uh, have if there was no radiation management over this uh, period. So I will make some other points in the next podcast. Uh, we will look again at these options uh, that we considered and see what are the confidence uh, Uh, of them in terms of radiative forcing, what are the advantages and disadvantages, pros and cons of these methods. So I'm going a little bit away from the group, uh, from the book in terms of uh, taking uh, aerosol spraying in the stratosphere and including other solar radiation management methods, but since it is about planet being remade, uh, we might as well consider these options here, which we may end up repeating a little bit later on in the book anyways.